Hello, this is Mike Lipman. And I Mike, you can start. We are on. All right, all right. I highly appreciate it for uh, really, uh, you really helped me. Like you said, on this amazing, amazing I, I do both. And this is amazing people's life. And I'm really enjoying it for the last uh, couple of months. And I have a um, couple of uh, live podcasts on this particular amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, channel or amazing uh, book. So I appreciate it. I, I really want to congratulate uh, the guy like who found this, uh, this amazing book. And his name is Piyush Pandas. He's an amazing guy from India. And he is really helping a lot of people that are talking up on this particular book. And he is helping humanity uh, to bring uh, next level consciousness and thoughtfulness and perspicaciousness. For the people that most importantly, I could see like so many people like they are bringing the mindfulness that really, uh, and I, on behalf of this, this I, I, you, I really want to congratulate and I want to appreciate everyone who is commenting and making the commendations on my profile and everyone. So it's an amazing network and if more people want to join this, amazing world like I can guarantee this is an amazing place. So I'm popping up here today to talk about the most important and the most inspiring topic. And uh, if we see today, uh, in today's world, like we all are suffering uh, one of uh, the biggest issues that is, uh, we are unable to meet our financial numbers. Uh, so the reason why, because we are looking at the government, we are looking at the people like, uh, where we get a good money, where we get a good job, and yeah, how would you like to uh, give us financial number? So most important, it was an amazing time because it's the beginning of uh, 2024, and uh, we are getting into the amazing time. This is AI, you are the most massive in the history, and we are lucky because we can really get advantages out of this beautiful time. Well, uh, I want to talk about today uh, on uh, entrepreneurship, and now we uh, our takeaway is really uh, the world class uh, takeaway. Why? Because uh, we did uh, discuss today uh, how can we become an entrepreneur? Why need to become an entrepreneur? And what are the innovations like we need to move? And uh, how can we really, you know, get something out of this life and how we can enjoy our freedom? So, once upon a time, um, there was a guy, and uh, uh, he was a great businessman, but uh, unfortunately, he was not good at uh, speaking English. And uh, but he had uh, one greatest wish, like I just want to expand and expand my business line all over the globe. So uh, he chose the most important country on the globe because if you are on the Mars and if you are looking for the Mars, and if you could ask someone like which one, which which uh, part of of the globe on Earth, you know, uh, as a most significant uh, part. So definitely there will be in the U.S. Um, I want to congratulate uh, all of you, like if you are in U.S. or you are in U.S. So uh, the guy that decided that I need to stand up and increase my profit line, my business, and decided to go to the United States. But there was a bit unlucky. He was, well, uh, he decided and uh, he took his baggage and he traveled to U.S. And once he got there, well, he had a big issue, big issue. Uh, while sent out here, he was uh, he was supposed to have meetings with the people. Well, uh, one of his friends like uh, told him, "Better you uh, have one interpreter or the channel who can help you like to speak English, like an American, because if you going to stay up here, so number one, you are supposed to speak English. Okay, you have to understand them, and then definitely you can offer your product." So he said, "Okay," and he hired one interpreter, and he started to he he asked him. Uh, I just want to learn English, but remember, I don't want to speak wrong in front of people. So I want to speak uh, perfect English. I don't want to make any uh, mistakes. Why? Because I don't want people to listen to me speaking wrong English. Wrong English. So he had this one big fear in his heart of mind because he never wanted to be listened as a failure or anyone like who's making mistakes. So he was so rigid on it. So he talked to them for an interpreter. I told him, okay, I'm going to tell you something. Initially, like they decided, okay, because I'm going to stay up, I'm going to stay up here for the next uh, couple of months. Or so first, I need to know like how to order my food. He said, okay, I can I can help you like how to order your food. I said, but he said, okay, just give me two words and I will uh, process it, okay, and uh, then I will order my.
my father said, okay, you told him three most valuable words, hamburger, french fries, and coke, and he was crazy about it. So he, he loved these three words, hamburger, french fries, and coke, hamburger, french fries, and coke. He was crazy. He was, um, he was cramming these three words because he was not having to speak anything seen or wrong. So he decided to go the next day. He popped up on some restaurants in the morning. And he was sitting up there. The lady was, he came up and she said, sir, how may I help you? Like, what would you like to And he said, again, both the French fries and coke. She said, okay. Yeah. And she was, he was served with this order. In lunchtime, he was ordering the same in some other restaurant, named burger, french fries, and coke. And the same, likewise, like in the evening time, in the dinner, he was offering, he was, uh, proposing the same order, he was saying in burger, french fries, and coke. And he was ordering the same thing, hamburger, french fries, and coke for a long time. And one day he, you know, uh, he got a uh, tummy cake and he came back to the interpreter and he said, like, hey, he told me three words, but it's, it's good enough because now I'm having a tummy cake. Please tell me more words, but listen. And remember, I don't want to speak anything wrong or silly, or I don't want people to listen me speaking in crap English. So please tell me three more words, and I just want to change my order. And he said, "Okay, I can tell you three more words." And uh, this time, he told them egg, toast, and juice. And again, he crammed the three words: egg, toast, and juice. Egg, toast, and juice. He crammed and very next day, when it was a restaurant, the lady was came and she 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 asked. How may I serve you? So, so, she, so he said, uh, I need eggs. And this time she said, okay, so we have different types of products. We have uh, as well, we have a French toast, we have a fried, we have a tano, and we have different types of eggs. So what kind of eggs you were like to eat? And he said, no, 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 no. Remember, he was not interested to speak. He was not taking any risk to speak anything wrong in front of people. All right? So... He moved on, he said, no, 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 I need toast. At this moment, like he said, okay, sir, we have a different type of toast. So what kind of toast do you like to eat? We have white toast, we have a plain toast, we have a different type of toast. So he was panicked and he was not ready to speak anything wrong. So he said again, no, I need juice. And this time, again, that lady was just asked, sir, we have different type of juice. So what kind of juice you would like to drink, we have tomato, we have uh, rejuvenated juice, we have different kind of juices, okay, we have shakes. So what kind of juice do you would like to pay? So he said, he was panicked, and in this moment, like the people were looking at him. Everyone was looking at him, and he was panicked, okay? He was drained, and he talked to the lady with this, no, 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 I need him, there's a french fries and toast. <laughs> so that's the point, people, are uh, ready to settle down with the things like they're, what they are uh, used to do in their life. And people are not ready to take risks. People are, uh, people don't want to be listening to a complete or, or like a zero or the failure. People just want to be perfect in their life. People don't want to be listening that someone is making mistakes. Remember, if you're not making mistakes, you're not going for success. If you're making mistakes, if you're going through failure, congratulations. Congratulations. Why? Because you learn from failures. You learn from the type. You can't learn from the class. So that's what we are, are going to talk uh, here today about. That we never need to settle down. So this is uh, the first agreement between me and you. All right. So once you get started your work, your business, so never settle down. Okay. Just go ahead and always try to go into the next level. All right. So uh, uh, my 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 colleague. Uh, trainer and uh, interpreter say to tell me, you know, uh, even your strengths are your comfortable zone, okay? And I recommend you people find your comfortable zone and then leave it, okay? Because your strengths and the skills you have acquired in your life, the set of skills you are living with, and to accomplish and achieve what you want to achieve in your life, even if you're done. So get ready to get okay and always try something new in your life. Because if you try, you fail. If you fail and you fail maybe thousand times like Thomas Edward and you fail thousand times because you don't know the number of failures you're gonna make. 
You don't know the number of mistakes you are going to and you're going to do while you are achieving your biggest goal or your biggest mission. So in order to achieve what you have never achieved in your life, you have to become someone who you never have been in your life. And, <clears throat> and to achieve something, whatever you have been doing, but this time you have to go for the beginning. You have to start something new. So never settle down in your life. Okay, I want to show you a couple of stories that I will move on to. The point, the real takeaway, may, may, make you sure, I'm making you sure, like today's um, takeaway is going to be the top one. And if you're going to attend my two hour seminar, or if you're going to attend my two hour workshop or this podcast, I'm making sure it's a much important, it's a more valuable than any top university in the world. Like it's going to be equivalent to that. Well, so once upon a guy from India, and there was an amazing guy, he had a very humble beginning, all right, and he's been through a lot of setbacks. He was uh, the youngest guy in his family, and uh, mother and father, they were doing kind of job. They were living in one room, and he was supposed to bring water from the distance, and, uh, but he was crazy, and he had been listening a lot from the people like, you're going to be successful if you're going to be putting a lot of sense into your work, if you're going to work more harder than anybody else. So your level of success is determined by the hard work. But remember, it is a myth. Hard work is a myth. It's not a reality, all right? It's just an opinion. So in your surroundings, if you are listening that, hey, if you're going to be, if you want to be successful, massively successful, so you have to increase your effort, your amount of effort, you have to put more into it. But I want to tell you, if you're not doing differently, so you definitely, you won't have a different result. But that guy was listening from the parents and parents of parents and the colleagues and the friends and everyone like he has around his family. And he got this obsession that if I want to be successful, then I have to put all my sense into it. And I have to do, I have to give more than 100% into my work. I have to work so hard that I will be successful. And he started to believe in it, but it was just a mess. And Later on, after his master when I came to the United States, and uh, he started to get his job, he went to Facebook, he went to Twitter, and other top typhoon companies, and, and the cyber that he was rejected, he couldn't get a job, but uh, he got an opportunity like to go and to have a meet up with the Google team, and uh, the Google team, when they were interviewing the, uh, that amazing soul, uh, Maybe they were expecting, and maybe other people would be expecting if you put in a real life in, in the in top position, but maybe you would be asked, like, how can you uh, get the advantage of the competitors? How can you help us, like, in the portfolio? Well, he was also expecting that much. But uh, the Google team didn't ask this kind of question. They just put an amazing question. They asked him, what was your biggest fear in your life, and how could you overcome that? So the same story told my biggest fear was that I had a passion like to work in hard and working alone. I started my company and I've been doing like everything myself. When I was doing the errands, I was doing the sales, the marketing, I was managing the team, I was building the team, I was doing that instead of work. I was doing activity of my business and I was really looking into the all make math, whatever, like I've the business out there. So he said like it was my fear, which I, I inherited it. I got in my legacy that working hard can help you to become the biggest success. But that was my just the fear, and I just overcame that fear by developing the team. Okay, so I delegated my work to the different people, and after delegating my 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 most important work, so I just took my job. I just took my my job description and I started to do. The most important thing, what I can do, and then I get everything. So I learned that it's not important to do your work. The most important thing in your life is how to get your work done by other people. So this is, it was my, my, my hard work was my biggest fear, which I overcame by developing the team. So yes, I'm talking about from the child, the amazing, amazing, amazing guy from India, and he's charging right now uh, the Google CEO is more than 600 million US dollars. Amazing. I wish and I was doing it because have this kind of uh, 
Well, uh, well <clears throat> so to Mr. Chai, uh, one, and the second question that he was asked, like, uh, uh, and on response, he said, uh, once upon a time, I was sitting in uh, the, a world class and the top class um, restaurant, and uh, unfortunately, there was a pop bottle, pop bottle, and uh, he was flying here and there, and uh, uh, I noticed the cockroach came on and ended up sitting up on the shoulder of one lady. So the lady was sitting up so cool and calm, okay? And that lady, you know, when she looked at uh, the cockroach, she started, uh, she played up and she started to cry and she was shouting. And in that moment, that cockroach like flew away and uh, uh, he picked up one more lady and she was sitting so cool and grounded and calm. But he sat on his shoulder, on her shoulder. And, uh, but when she knew that, like, okay, I had a cockroach here, and she started to shout, she started to cry. And the cockroach flew from there and went on to some other man, or that was sitting so calm and silent. So, in that moment, Sundar was looking at this story, this drama that was happening in this amazing restaurant. But in the meanwhile, he noticed that, um, the waiter and the waiter was looking at the story like what's happening so he could anticipate like what's happening so that's why um uh, the waiter he was standing up in the door very cool and he was standing up uh silently so in the meanwhile the cockroach came on his shoulder and he just without waiting he just took out the tissue paper and he picked up that cockroach and he torn it out from the window. So what he could anticipate is because uh, that cockroach was sitting on the people that were sitting in the cool and calm position. So he anticipated and he responded to that situation. Everyone was pretty much honest in, in there uh, in the restaurant, but he was so cool and he was just uh, responding to that situation. So most of the time we react to the situation. We don't respond to the situation like we are having a life for the messages, uh, so the child when told that story of the Google team, they all stood up and the class for him and he was selected for this biggest position and right now so that it was amazing, amazing, it's gonna be the world to people. So what we are uh, talking today about uh, entrepreneurship. So I have a broken note here. So the news is uh, 95% income 95% total production of wealth is taken by, by only 5% people. The 5% wealth is taken by the 95% population and 95% wealth on the other side is taken by only 5% population. So the reason why, because our life is not out of the uh, old ways of producing income because we have just these Four lifestyles. Lifestyle number one is if you are doing a job, if you are an employee, okay? If you are an employee and you are giving your time from nine to five, your time is for change, your skills, status skills, your mission, vision, passion, or even your dream being thrown out by someone who is dreaming big and you are ready to sell yourself somewhere where you just want to charge a month, you are just charging a salary, you are working as an employee. And I want to tell you here, the employees, uh, categorically, if you see, because there are 29 types of mindset, so they categorically, they come under um, the fifth mindset people, because I knew my friend, one of my friends, I said, hey, I just want to start a business, and they told me, hey, come on, man. Why are you leaving your job? Why are you leaving your job? What are you going to do? How do you do? Like, how can you manage your square business? All right. So, so the guy, like, always telling you the fear of what they have for the business. So, number one, the employees, they sell themselves off. I mean, once you are given your most valuable and the most important time from nine to five, and they're giving you seven days. A week, all right, and you are going in the morning every day like you are going into the school, okay? So the point is, you are 
losing all your relations. Once you are in a job, you are losing your license. I've been in a job, and but right now I'm a capitalist. I'm a businessman, all right? I always appreciate ideas, and I always, you know, put ideas uh, for my clients. I'm working in a multiple mul- mul- marketing, uh, it's a, a multi-level marketing business. I'm trainer, speaker, coach, and I help people like to go into the next consciousness level. So employees mean... The life is dead, and this is, it means like the person is no more effective for his life. If you, you will definitely, you, will, uh, you, you can't be successful and happy in your life once you are having a job. You even can't pay all your, you, you can't allocate, you can't give your time to your family. I knew my lot of them, they're the bankers, and they're going from nine to five jobs, even they are, um, uh, they are having late sitting, like they are sitting for the long hours in the business, all right? And still the bosses, the management isn't happy, and they are seriously screwed up. I personally have investigated, like, when they are going in the morning, their blood pressure is the same like the young kids are going to the school in the morning. So in being employee, it's pretty pathetic in the situation. Why? Because you have lost your vision and you have told your biggest dream if you have in your life, all right? Which means you you are not helping yourself to achieve your dream. You're helping someone else to achieve his or her dream, all right? So in a job, it means you have surrendered and you are a fixed-minded person. I'm so sorry. A lot of people don't have a job, but it depends. All right. So the second type of people we have, the second mindset and the second uh, level where, where because I'm talking about 95% people, okay? And they are getting 5% and stuff. So the second type of people come under where the 95% people are, they are the self-employed people. Self-employed people, they are selling their skills. But uh, most of the time, I notice like they are accepting checks. They are, have a little free time, but they have to create everything from themselves. All right, so in, in self-employed job life, when I also come in, um, at some point, like I was a self-employed, all right, as you see the advocates, the lawyers, and the doctors, engineers, if you are just selling your skills and um, you're not really time bound, all right, but who have to uh, maintain uh, their level, their, your client's level, you have to put your all sense and you have to give all the energy to them and still maybe they're not going to be happy. Well, and still you are so much, you are the most busy in your work life or at your, when you're working from home or you're working at some other place. All right, so uh, being a self-employed, even if it's not a great idea, okay, so there are two types of people, employees and self-employed people, okay? They are 95% people in the world, okay? And they are uh, 518 million people in the world. And uh, out of it, there are 274 million people, they are the women, all right? And they are somewhere, you know, overall in their, uh, they have their own entrepreneurship business, all right. So let's come to the second second category, you know. Uh, they are the business owners and the investors, okay? So being the business owner, I think it's the greatest way, it's the greatest idea because, uh, your country, your nation, your uh, surrounding, the demand, is, all right, because it has extension, which we can create a legacy. And in today's world, if you see all the top tycoon companies, they come under the business ownership, all right? They have their business and they have employed people with them. They acquire all the startup skills and capable people, all right? They, they, are, they, are, they are hiring people, they're firing people as well, all right? So they are acquiring the great talent and they are helping people to achieve uh, the company's mission, company's vision, and the company's dream. All right. So the business ownership is, is the greatest idea. It's the greatest idea because an, as an entrepreneur, so this, this is what comes this, on this topic we're going to talk more about today that the business ownership or we are talking about the, the entrepreneurship, okay, where you and what you are. Uh, Start all right. You invest money. You invest resources. Sometimes you don't have, so you ask to the bank and you ask to the people, and you mobilize all your resources. Okay, resources in case 
uh, of people and money and a staff, a fixed staff or, or the current staff, all right? So uh, you create a capital, all right? And this is the greatest form of all the capitalist uh, business. So I'm a capitalist and I would, ask, I would ask you to become a capitalist. So the business ownership and the entrepreneurship can help you to extend and one business creates more and multiple level business. And by the end of the day, like you can go in for the international branding. You can have a startup everywhere in the world. You can you can uh, recruit people from all parts of the world. All right, so you can extend, like you see all the top top typhoon companies or like all the multi level business. You know they they come under the entrepreneurship, the business ownership. All right, so. This is the greatest idea because your country is demanding this kind of business. So the last type of business where you see uh, most of the great people. So well, here you need to know in business owners like there are uh, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, okay, Mike Littman, Tim Lipichai, like you see uh, the Larry Page, and all top like things you see in IT or otherwise you see and the all top great business in the world, like they come under this. And you see, like they have a future, they are enthusiastic, they want to do something, they are ready to put the dent on this world, and they are ready to take the biggest risk in their life for the business. And they are most successful people. They create a lot and they have a lot of time to meet with the people, and they are so happy campers. All right. So that. The last level is investors, all right. But here I need to tell you the business owners and investors, they are just 5% people in the world, but they are taken, they're taken away is 95% world overall in the world, all right. So it's up to you like to decide that who you want to be in your life. I mostly ask people two questions, a most important question in your life. Question number one is that what do you want to be in your life? Question number one, what you want to be in your life? And question number two, what you're doing for the person you want to be? And question number three, what greatest effort, what different effort like you are putting into it to get the person you want to be in your life? Because these two questions can really help you. Then you need to question all this, all this question yourself about it. Well, so the last category I'm talking about, uh, the Warren Buffet and so many people in the world. I knew a couple of more people like they are in my intimacy, they are very much close to me, and they are in the website. They have money, they sleep all day. They have a lot of time to interact with people. They're always busy, you know, they are the happiest camper. They're always traveling. They have a lot of time to attend uh, the marriage ceremony. They always, when I go to the marriage ceremony, when I, the same people come out there. Why? Because they have a lot of time. They just have money and they invest it. And they are investors. They are sleeping all day. They have a lot of time. They are so amazing people. They love and uh, they always bring a lot of fun. But they are relaxed. They are not more enthusiastic. They are not more active like everybody. Maybe you don't know much people who are investing money around you, all right, or the biggest company. Okay, so being an investor uh, is great for the person individually, but the country is looking forward. That beautiful, that beautiful slot, what I'm talking about, the business ownership. I'm talking about entrepreneurship, but remember, again, employees and self-employed people, they take, they are 95% people in the world in any country, all right? American sales, they definitely, they, they are in up uh, in ranking in uh, the entrepreneurship world. Yeah? And then we see the China, Japan, German, some of other people, but it is a huge difference because the United States is a place of entrepreneurs. People out there, they're more than 70% people. They're not looking for the job. They're not waiting for the job. They're not searching. They, that their jobs in the newspapers or they're not home and they're entrepreneurs. And this is the beauty of capitalist space. Why? Because out there, people love to do something bigger and better than other people. And then you're going to be rewarded. All right? So, the government job is there to maintain that relationship, okay? It's their job to provide justice and to regulate the things. And at the same time, they provide a 
uh, foundation and the food library people love to do their own work. Okay. So uh, I think this is the full, it's the uh, biggest, it's a cheating uh, sometimes. I'm sorry, the critical people like to teach you, like we're going to give you a job. So there's no job. All right. So you did it, create a job for yourself. Well, so there are four ways to produce income in the world. Okay. And now you did it, choose one way for yourself. This is what I'm recommending is because we are talking today about uh, we're going to make an impact about entrepreneurship. Well, um, I'm really coming to the point, all right? And I'm going to make you sure, like, today's take away would be the top notch one. I'm making sure, all right? So don't go away and just stay with me for next uh, one and a half hour. You're going to be the biggest success, all right? I'm making sure. So we have just assume like we're going to become now uh, an entrepreneur, all right? And we're going to sell ideas, all right? So entrepreneur means uh, you, you're going to be busy uh, in some activity, okay? In some activity where the risk is involved, all right? And you are putting your mental or physical effort into something for some gain. This is to be called uh, work, or this is to be called entrepreneurship. And by birth, we are born to work. The most beautiful thing I could learn, like, uh, my last couple, a couple of years ago, when someone asked me, one of my mentors and the coach asked me, hey, Mikey, what you doing? What you doing for? What are you getting free of cost? What are you, what you getting like for God? Are you getting um, uh, uh, water? You're getting oxygen, all right? You're getting trees, okay? The free oxygen. You are getting a lot of things free of cost. What are you doing back? What are you giving back? If you're not giving back, oh, you are like a burglar, all right? You are a cheater because you like a thief, all right? So you are born to pay back, okay? And everyone is born to work. This is the real purpose of our work. We all are born to work. Like you see the trees and birds, and you look at the nature, it's always moving. So the human being, we also need to move. So that's why we are born for the work. We are born to make this world a conducive place for our next generation. This is not a place where you come and you take rest. And I'm not going to you take rest, a rest. I'm telling you, this is a philosophy in 1950s was the American school in the team, Israel, you know, that they had a dream, all right? And they started to execute that dream. And everyone works there. You don't need to go. Like I knew a lot of people, like they never charge money and still they're working. By the end of the day, they're rewarded for it. And they have the biggest payoff for that. Well, so after um, uh, discussing a couple of more uh, laws, which are very much important to understand before uh, going to uh, start some business. So number one is uh, the law of brainstorming. All right, I want to tell you something about the Steve Jobs, my most favorite guy. Like I can remember, I could uh, see him uh, in China in uh, the windows of the world office. That was my most favorite office, and I really loved it, the fountain to the beautiful garden in China. That was amazing, really. So I just want to talk about Steve Jobs. How many people of you know, like, he was the biggest hero, he was the biggest job from mother? or rise and stuff at the university from everywhere. I think it was the biggest deal of the biggest. Like even he started his work, uh, he started his company and later on he was fired from his own company. And uh, But when he came back in Apple, he came up uh, with amazing uh, strategies and then he downsized the number of products and then he really rocked uh, the Apple, Apple company. Well, so I'm talking about like how he was used to think how he was used to brainstorm. This is the trillion, trillion dollar idea. Don't skip. If you are here with me, if you're popping up for this podcast, you're going to be so lucky. So don't skip this amazing technique like how to think and how to create a greatest idea. So it is the Steve Job method. He was used to write one great, one, one statement, one idea. All right. For example, like if you want to, uh, Reduce your weight, so you need to write a smart statement. For example, you can write, 
I want to uh, reduce my weight from 100 kg, okay, to 80 kg in next six months. All right, so you believe me right in a smart segment. You are given the time, month, year, and the quantity you want to review. So once you write this idea, once you identify like what you want to achieve in your life, what you want to achieve back, so the next thing what you're going to do is you need to take a page and write down like next 21 solutions. Um, it would be so hard. The first solution would be much easier. And as like you are, we would be thinking more and more. So you're going to be writing 20, 21 are different ideas that how can you reduce and you then going to pick up one and then pick up one idea and write it on the next page top of the next page and then write 21 ways to execute that plan for that solution and solution number 21 would be the jackpot and solution number 21 you can implement and you really can achieve the biggest one so this is a great thing why because i most you talk uh, about like you, you're going to become an uh, idea machine, all right? Whoever you're in your life, because the real purpose of education and the top companies, and if you're going, uh, the top companies you're hiring, the people like who can come up, come up with uh, the greatest ideas, or if you uh, if you become an idea machine, so definitely you can start, uh, you can have a great startup in your life. So, uh, number two law, what I want to share with you is the law of living considerably because your life is not for granted all right and i'm going to talk about about uh family okay because everyone on this globe is my family member but i just want uh to 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 downside this okay because whatever you're doing whatever i'm doing here i'm on live for this podcast i'm doing it for my family and if you are watching this podcast, it's definitely you want to put your sons into your work. You want to um, execute all this and for your family. So we all are here for our family. We are doing this for, for, for our family. So from today, I want you to start living considerable life. So how, how do you can live considerable life? Number one, you need to arrange some private meetings with all your family members. If you, remember, if you have five but the sisters, so you need to know what do they want from you. Because life is all about what can you do for other people. How can you help other people? And this will help you to bring a great relationship and harmony where you're living. Because success begins at home. All right? Like if you have three brothers, two sisters, so you need to go privately. You can have some meetings. But uh, never let other people know like what you're doing. So first you would go in one for one corner meeting with your brother. So you gotta write what you want from me and write down in a page. Okay, for example, like if the person is giving you the 10 goals on the missions, like the person is looking for, so you need to now go to your next brother and ask like, okay, a 10 more goals and then likewise you will you will compile, you will collect all the information from all your family members like how can I help you? Then write down your goal and write up on a page, write down your term goals, all right? And then take all the pages and then check out the similarities, all right? And then make a new page and where you will have the consolidated goals and consolidated uh, mission what you have in your life because this is only a way you can have a better relationship within your family, all right? Because if you want to be if you want to be successful, you will be successful first at your home, okay? The stuff begins that own. All right. So uh, next is, uh, before uh, we discuss about more about entrepreneurship, we first need to know something bigger because in order to achieve, uh, you, you're from in, in 2020, in 2024, you're going to achieve something bigger. So first we have to change ourselves. But we need to uh, reshape ourselves. We, we are supposed to develop some great habits in our life. All right. So the one thing you're going to do is remember the law of winning edge benefits. Remember, the horses win by noses. Horses win by noses. If you see the noses of horses, like they are totally flat, okay? But the winning horse always win by the same memory. And the people always remember the horse number one. And after a couple of months, six months, like they remember the second one, 
And the third one, with the test of time, people start forgetting about the third and second. First, they forget the third, and then they forget the second. People always remember the first one, okay? So remember, before going into entrepreneurship, you're going to be the little battle with other people, okay? If you're a little battle with other people, you really can make a bigger success. You can bring a groundbreaking success in your life. So you're going to be little battle over the other people. People only remember number one, all right? So remember, success is only 10% of your total assets. So never forget, so you, you are supposed to bring uh, personal awareness in your life, all right? So you're going to be more than, uh, you need to bring more mindfulness into your work. So definitely your number of assets will be to the downside. But remember, success is only 10% of your total assets. So you have to increase your number of assets. One, that foster uh, was interviewed, like he's the greatest uh, uh, impresario. He was interviewed by the Devin Hardy. But Devin Hardy asked him, uh, David, your songs are always, your top, you're always in top 10 songs well, for, for a long time, all right? And he told, uh, and the, the next question was, like, what, what, what is the right time? Like, how much do you, like, recreate yourself? And uh, the, he responded to question number one. Uh, he told us that if you see my 10 top 10 songs, like, into the top chart, okay, for a long time, remember, I created the 100,000 songs. Okay, and then my 10 songs are on to the top. All right, so you have to increase your number of efforts. You have to increase the number of your child. You even don't know which effort is going to make it success for you because the success is about probability, A, B, A, C, A, B, A, E, A, E. So you know better if you've been studying math by math, which you by the way. Well, so, uh, so the point is, it's just about probability, okay? And you have to increase your number of tries, and you have to do it differently, okay, with a different combination in your life. Okay, so uh, one more law, and afterwards we'll be discuss a few more laws after this presentation, so that the, this law is very much productive and very much uh, beneficial for all of you guys if uh, you're watching this podcast. And next is the law of politicism. Look, politicism means like this. It means like I am the most important and significant person in the world. If you look at the sun, okay, it's shining every day and it's really doing its job 24 over 7 by 365. He never complains. He always takes the responsibility. I'm, I'm going to tell you, like, you know, the most beautiful line what I have learned from this law is you, know, you feel you're the most important person. I once had a meeting with a guy. It's a great typhoon, business typhoon, and I, and I asked him, how may I help you? And when I said, how may I help you? He was shocked, go back into it. He said, no, 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 Mikey, tell me how can I help you? And then he helped me a lot really to uh, bring uh, something new. And we started to work on new ideas. But this is the most powerful line when you say people, how may I help you? And it's a reflection of lost solipsism. Like many time, like you call on some helpline and you say, uh, and you, you, you get some uh, respondent there, you get some uh, the customer service representative, and he puts or she puts like talk to you, hey, this is my place, man, how may I help you? All right, how may I help you? It's the most powerful and the most fabulous line in the world, really. Why? Because when you say, how may I help you? How can I help you? It means you are reflecting with abundance of energy. You are showing up a most incredible person in the world, and a most uh, gigantic, and I'm much like Hulk because I'm available to you. I'm here to help you. Oh, why? Right, when you're ready to help you, it means you are showing up a lot of energy. You are showing up a charisma. All right, and this is the line. Most of the time, you listen from the leaders, okay? The person who's love leaders, all right? They always tell you, how may I help you? They investigate you. They ask you different questions, but they, 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 but anybody they ask you, how may I help you? Why? Because they want to help you to stay stronger. If you need help, so don't worry. Ask for the help. If you don't have money for any business, ask for the bank. And ask for someone like who can lend you money, all right? You can borrow money. You want to stay stronger 
with a beautiful word of help, all right? Help, if you are not taking help, it means you are not ready to grow, all right? If you are not taking help, it means you don't want to help more people. So this is the most powerful phrase, all right? You need to understand and you need to apply in your life and I, I want to tell you seriously, it's the bottom line. I personally think that what I say somehow may help you, the people come and they start helping me in response. You know, I want to help them, all right? So whatever you're doing in your life, always do it with the intention of help, okay? If you are helping people, if you are helping people to fix their problems, and not just number of problems, the level of problem you are fixing, the level of problem you are becoming solution for that, I want to tell you it's going to determine your level of success. It's going to determine your portfolio. It's going to determine that who you are. And what you're doing in your life is to reflect your life. Your life is a clear cut message to the world like what you're doing in your life. So remember if you want to say how may help you and if you're doing something to help people, all right? They're going to help you back. And your help will come back to you after multiplication. You help just one person, and you would be helped by the millions of people. I personally, I experience, I guarantee you people, if you really help people, if you are doing something to help people, I once had a, I'm talking about uh, one of my friends, he's a great entrepreneur, uh, about a year, uh, he is not having that kind of uh, the great business is a good guy. He's just selling a tea, okay? And I want to move because I love to take tea, and especially in almond. That's beautiful. Um, so it's it's a romance, so it's all right. So I asked him, hey, are you selling tea? He said, no, I'm not selling tea. You can see so many people sitting up here at your tea stall. You are serving it. He said, no, no, no. I'm not selling tea. I'm not serving with tea. I said, then what you doing? He said, I'm not selling tea. I'm selling health. My God. And that was a significant emotional event in my life. And I learned and I executed in my business. From the day I started to help people, I never talked to the people for money. I always talked to the people for their lives, all right? I want to help them to go on to the next level. I want to help them to become the biggest success. When I see them successful, I feel great. And remember, if you want to become billionaires, or at least make some people millionaire, all right? So, well, I asked him, hey, if you're not selling tea, so what you selling out? He said, no, I'm not selling. I'm just helping people. I'm just selling help. Uh, I said, how can you help them by giving tea? Everyone is selling tea. He said, no, I have my own duck clothes. I have my own cattle. All right, so I take the fresh milk, all right, and I uh, make my pure milk into that tea. I said, then what happens? He said, if they get it, drink my pure milk tea, they're going to be more healthy. I said, then what? He said, if they're going to be healthy, then they're going to put more sense into the work. They're going to more work harder. I said, wow. So what? He said, if they're going to work more harder, they're going to get more money. I said, oh my God. Then, and he said, if they're going to get more money, they're going to give that money to the family. I said, wow, great idea. I said, what? Then what? He said, okay, if I get to give the money, okay, he got to give that money to the kids and the family, they're going to be more happy. I said, then. And he said, if they're going to be more happy, he's going to be more happy. And he would get more energy. And after getting this energy, they're going to be more working. They're going to be working more hard. They're going to be more money. I said, but then, that if they're going to get more money, they're going to come back to my team. And they're going to take my team more, and they're going to be more rich. So your health comes back to you. But first, you have to plant that seed in your heart and mind. 
that you are not born to earn money. You are not born to be alone successful. You know, you are born to make a lot of people successful. I want to say hey, that's why everyone around you, everyone in this group is your family member. You want to help everybody around you. This is your the real purpose of your life. You born on this mission. You born on this purpose, and this is the purpose you can give to your life, and you can give a real sense and a purpose to your life. And this is the way to make your life a meaningful, okay, and a purposeful life. So, well, um, I knew a lot of. Uh, uh, greatest ideas about entrepreneurship, but the first thing, if you want to become an entrepreneur, remember, if you are really dreaming for, if you, a lot of people ask me, hey, I, well, what do I need to do? Because there are a lot of people, they're doing a lot of things, so what, what I can do, there's no space for me. I said, no. What one thing you see in your society or in your culture, what one thing you experienced in your life and you've been betrayed and you've never been feeling great. What one thing has really hurt you and your life? And now you don't want people to experience the same pain and you don't want people to suffer from that pain. And you are born to work on this, to help people to refrain and to stay and to protect the people from the problem. I do one of my a great student, King uh, King Gold. I mean, she's amazing. I've been like working with her on uh, some motivation work, and now she is a very youngest entrepreneur and the motivational speaker, and she's learning a lot. She's going into the right direction. I believe in direction. I don't believe in a speed. Well, and I, I asked her, like, hey, what do you want to do in your life? What are you going to do in your life? I said, I've so I have a clarity. In my village, I noticed a lot of people that died because of the contaminated water, because in, near to my village, near to my place, uh, uh, there are the puddles and there are the streams where uh, the contaminated water is going through. So I can't manage. I noticed a lot of people that died. Even my grandma, they, she had a lot of stomach ache because she'd been like, because everyone was vulnerable to the water. We have a uh, good dispenser at our home, and we are having a great water, but I see a lot of people in my village that died because of that contaminated and that miserable water. So now I say, what do you want to do? She says, so I want to do work. I want I to start a campaign uh, to protect my village, to protect the people's life in uh, my society, in my village, and that's my mission. This is this is what I'm, I'm going to do. I said, well, what are you going to do for it? How, how can you do it? She said, okay, I knew like for this, you need the highest degree, uh, but I don't have a highest degree. I'm so young, but I have started to learn from different books and I have started to learn like how can I help. So you're born to help. And if you are serious, if, if you have a real pain in your heart and mind, if you are really striving, the one pain, what one thing like you see around you and you can't manage the thing. You can't afford to see all this. Start working for us. You are a real entrepreneur. Well, uh, remember, every problem in the business, now it's up to you. What kind of problem are you going to choose? What level of problem you are going to choose? Because then you will provide a solution. I mostly ask my clients and my students and everyone, this is the most powerful affirmation. I say, hey, I'm a solution. I'm a benefit. I'm a help. I get to be the biggest of stuff. All right? I'm not born on the spirit of fear. I'm born on the spirit of freedom. So this is these four, five affirmations you need to practice in your life. And remember, every problem is a business. All right? You don't need to uh, get what you like you don't have. Uh, the Jack Ma, I really love him, and he's a this guy, this young entrepreneur, and he really changed the world through Alibaba.com. Why? Because uh, uh, when he started his company, uh, he has a story, a long story short, he was the biggest rejection. He was rejected by the cop. There were 24 seats, and he was, uh, 23 people were accepted, and uh, he was the only who was not accepted, and then the KFC opened their business in China. Uh, he was rejected, all right. When he went for the cop, uh, he wanted to be recruited as a cop, and he was rejected. 
So he has not acquired all those things what what can help you to become the greatest success. But remember, success is a choice. Okay, if it's a choice, then remember, success is never personal. Okay, success is never personal. Dreams are never personal. Freedom is not personal. Responsibility is not personal. You are born to help. You are never you never get personal about it because you if your dreams are personal, it means you're gonna go for the limited success. If you are uh, dreaming about, if you are dreaming impersonally, okay, uh, you don't need to think personally. If you are just thinking about yourself, you're not going for the biggest success. You need to dream impersonally. Dreams are never personal. Dreams are not about you. Dreams are all about other people. Dreams are about other people. It's not about you. You are dreaming for the people's success. You are making other people successful and happy. You want to see other people to earn money. You want to see other people to have a bad relationship. You want to see other people to, to get away from the setback. You want to see other people to start their own business. All right? So if you are getting worried about it, but like Jasma says, how can you choose yourself for one big problem? He said you never need to get worried about where your parents are worried about because we're always worried about that where the parents are worried about. You have to think above that, all right? You never need to get worried about where your parents are worried about. You never need to get worried about even your teachers are worried about, all right? You're going to give the top level of respect, okay? But remember, you even never need to get worried about where your teachers are worried about. You never need to get worried about where your government is worried about, okay? The, the government is worried about so many things. Even you never need to get worried about where your friends, your your friends are worried about. No, you never need to get worried about. You never need to get worried about even your kids are worried about. Your children, your family is worried about. Even you never need to get worried about the word everyone is worried about. No way. You are born to get worried about where no one is worried about. Okay, and that's where your success is. That's where your mission is. That's where you have to get on the board and start working. You don't need money, right? You don't need resources. You don't need public relations. You don't need anyone. And being an entrepreneur, you're already overqualified. I'm telling you this. You're overqualified. All right, you're overqualified. But if you have, if you're a biggest zero, if you're even quit from the school, college, university, if you're a job, no problem. No way. No issue at all, right? You're already overqualified to pick up one problem. Okay. And that level of problem, that level of opportunity, you have to get on to it. And you have to start working on it. This opportunity, this one big mission will wake you up in the morning and will never allow you to sleep if you're simply worried about this. Because this is a worry where the no one is worried about. And here you have to worry about it. All right, so first you have to leave your comfortable zone and you have to leave your the fixed mindset, okay? The fixed mindset, they're going to go for the job. They never take risks. They are, they already have fear. They are ready to settle down, all right? Even they have a lot of fears and they tell you their fears, okay? Even they listen to people and they accept other people's opinion about them and then they help them to become the reality of their opinions in their own lives. All right, they don't have the biggest dream. They don't have the biggest mission. They don't have the biggest vision. They settle down and they are ready to do what everyone is doing. Even they're not ready to, to do it differently. They are just ready to do what everyone is doing. All right, they never go against the wind. They are not. They are actually, in the bottom line, they are reasonable people because reasonable people, they are. They're well connected with everyone. They want to fix everything within uh, with their calling. And they are very really happy in their life. And they settle down. Even they go for the marriage ceremony, they go for the world trip. They have money, right? But they are the reasonable people. I'm not reasonable. How many people of you are unreasonable people? I have a very big, big biggest news and a breaking news for life. If you are unreasonable, but then you gotta be the entrepreneur. And there are 580 million people in the world. They are unreasonable people because they have they have their own startup. All right, they they do they are working on a mission and they are making this world 
are worth the living fire. They are making this world a conducive place for our next generation. They are amazing people. They are the entrepreneurs. Okay, a lot of my friends, uh, our friend, uh, later on it was my friend, uh, he, he's been studying with me at some college education, and he was rejected by, uh, because he, he fell in love with some girl, and uh, he proposed her, and later on the proposal, like in the culture of life, you know, it, it happened. So the proposal was kicked in uh, to the parents, and the parents rejected the boy. The, there was a major reason why, because he was not doing a job. And they were looking forward to the guy like who is doing a job, and the person, if person like uh, is deployed somewhere for some work on the job, so the person they really can't take care of my daughter. This is the parents were thinking about. They, and the, but the boy was interested in to have his own startup because he was MBA and he wanted to do a business. But they, the, their family, the girl's family, was requiring, they were requesting, and they were demanding, like, you must have a job. And he was much interested in a job, and he, he, he put his team somewhere, but he couldn't get a job because he has no attitude for the job. And he was betrayed, and he was fused, he was. Uh, my goodness, he had a very bad time. Later on, he started his business, and now he is a massively successful person. He was not doing his job. He had a lot of people working with him on his work, and he's a great uh, entrepreneur, he's a great businessman now. He's earning a lot of money. Um, so, so, so it's about the culture. It's a family culture as well. He has a lot of family. They love to go in business, and other type of families, they love to see their kids for the job. And anyway, they're going to school called university, and they're listening from the child, they're like, hey, we're going to go for the job. We are not going for the business. You know, they don't have the business culture in their own. Uh, once I had a big project uh, with one school, I have, by the way, changed thousands of schools on this college road. I trained a lot of people from uh, the different tiers in their life. Uh, so I was given a project that uh, we want kids to start have a startup. All right, so how can we motivate kids? How can we have kids to think uh, in their young age, in their early ages to become? Because by end of the day, you have to plant the seed in the children's mind. So the why the children they're just thinking, okay, they see the people like most of the people, they are doing a job. So they just want to just start thinking because kids they don't like voices. They don't like suggestions. They always follow the people they see. They observe and they pick it up. So if you if you look at the kids like they are having things and they are going through this kind of situation that a lot of people they're doing they are doing jobs. All right, very few people they are doing business. All right, so we how can we help the young kids to become and to think to become like a uh, a great businessman, all right, or to go into the entrepreneurship. Well, so what I do is I have designed some questions and I ask most of the time to my kids, like my kids now, like they want to become entrepreneurs, they want to go into the business, they don't want to go for the job, they just want to stay home, they just want to have a relationship with you. Uh, of a, we see you like you most of the time, you are working and uh, you have enough time like to see your family. And uh, you really have a great job. We are not interested in that. We are interested in this. So then I designed one program. It's a soft skills program for the young teenage people. Okay, some kids uh, have matured, matured like to 13 years or like that. So we can have this kind of uh, training with them. This boy or girl like him become a CEO or you can know, have some startup and some definitely. So I have designed some questions. So most of the time when I I put this thing for my, my own kids whenever we go to, to the pizza or the restaurant, whenever we go into the market. So I always get them with me. And I ask them how to buy the product. And we are having the conversation because uh, we are. So my, my youngest kid, Bob, he is always helping me to pay the money. All right. So I always give him my wallet. So he is much interested now in kind of this activity. He knew the value of money and how he is. Whenever he goes 
with me. So uh, whenever we pick up stuff, any stuff, you know, stuff is very costly. So we need to compare it with uh, some other products or with some other market. We need to check it out. So he always going to the comparison. I question him. I question my other kids. Uh, Ari, like um, you are enjoying those pizza, all right? So tell me, do you know um, how much is that? So he says, Papa, I know it's ten dollars, fifteen dollars. So he knows the value of money, and he knows uh, there is some business. Okay, so I tell them like this is a pizza restaurant. Okay, we are sitting up here, and we are paying every, uh, we are paying all the cents. And we are paying money for each and everything. You know, we're sitting up here, so we are paying for this. We're going to buy the pizza, we're going to pay for this. Even we are, uh, we are giving the hustlers and other kind of things like um, the condiments, so we are paying for it. Okay. So they know the value. Okay. So they are understanding. So we can instill this kind of attitude. We can instill this kind of questions. And we can, so we have to play the question among the kids, among your own children. So being a parent, you can help your kids to, uh, to decide then, like uh, the business, the greatest thing, uh, to bring to the entrepreneurship is the biggest thing. So then I go to the budget store, so I get my kids with me. So I never go to the market without my kids. I always get them with, uh, within the market, or I always take uh, them with me to to buy the things. I question them, and I am uh, instilling uh, something, and I'm bringing more insightfulness uh, into their life, like this is a business, and they are earning more money, and we don't have this kind of business. So if he can start up, so my my, uh, my eldest son, like he's much interested to like to have uh, five or six businesses at the same time. He's not much interested in going to school, college, or university. He's doing right, okay. And uh, uh, he always like has a quest to know anything, everything, okay. So uh, what we can create a culture, and uh, we can help the young kids to become uh, entrepreneurial. So uh, once upon a time, there was a young guy, and one day uh, he went back to home from school. He was so young. He was in class four, maybe. All right, he was in class three or four. And he went back to from, from, from school to home, and he knocked the door. Father and mother, they came at the door, and the father said, I'm so sorry, you're not allowed to stay at home. From today, you got to manage everything for yourself. And I had the same question for my kids, and he said, Papa, you're not doing that. This is not okay. All right? So, so the game plan was different. The nature was looking at that boy, and the boy was amazing. And he said, okay. Uh, he accepted. He said, okay, I'm, I'm accepting my child offer you are giving me. I'm going to say as your home. Uh, but just give me a favor. I just want to sleep in your home. And otherwise, we're going to manage the parents. said, okay. You just can't stay up here, you can't sleep uh, here in a home, but otherwise you could have managed each and every thing from yourself. You could have earned money, you could have managed your education, you could have managed each and every thing, even your food. He said, okay. And he started to stay on, and uh, he was just black four, he was just uh, 11 years, and he was uh, searching a job. He was in the 1950s, he was searching a job in the United States, all right? And uh, he couldn't get a job because uh, there was a rule of five in the young people was not allowed to get a job. But uh, he could get a job on some uh, news uh, agency where he was supposed to pick up the news and he was shoot to drop in the morning. And uh, he was he started his job and was getting uh, one pen, okay, for one newspaper. So uh, he has been doing like everything into work and he's been all this time in the morning. And after coming from school, he started to go for some extra hours. He was, he was able to make uh, 2,000 US dollars, okay? And he thought if I get to make this $2,000, I have earned, so if I will spend so, my money would be consumed. So what I should do? He decided, okay, I need to invest this money. So he uh, invested in the market, and he, he got an idea, and he bought uh, some massaging machine. And every machine cost four hundred dollars. So this way, like he could buy the five massaging machines that he dropped it into the different um, massage places. All right, and the, the deal was like every evening I would come to your place and I would check out the meter. All right, so the money would be fifty fifty, and he got agreed like with the people. So every evening he was going into the different places and he was getting um, money. Uh, he was giving 50% to 
the owner of the mojito is getting that 50 percent of his pocket just in next six months he earned two thousand more just dollars so the first two thousand US dollars he could earn in two years and now next other two thousand US dollars he could earn just in um six months and now he was owner for the four thousand US dollars he bought he bought more machine and he dropped some more prices and he was earning more and more money and after a year he bought a car and the people around him he was the people were looking at him wow he's a poor young guy and he had his own car it was 1950. wow so the people are like started to question and like how you make money all right if you if we're going to give the money so can you invest our money? He said, okay, I can invest your money, but I will charge commission on that. He started with one more business. All right. So uh, after a year, he had 100 people who invested the money into his business. And after five years, he had five more companies. And imagine the 500 people that were working with him. And then he quit from the school and he started his own financial company. I'm talking about the Warren Buffett, the amazing, amazing guy. Like the later on, he became the world's richest person through his business. And uh, after like uh, those companies, and you know, uh, right now he's donating 95 percent of his personal income to Melinda Gates Foundation. And Melinda Gates Foundation, like they are investing that money, they're spending that money uh, in a philanthropic work, it's a philanthropy, all right. And uh, that money is going into uh, the health and education into the underprivileged or underdeveloping countries in the world. And he like the five percent income, he is still in the top ten, top five with that income. He became the billionaire. And the question is, once you become successful, when you're doing any activity, so people come and they invest money in you, right? Then you become much, much, much richer, and your portfolio goes up and up, up and up, up and up. And you see. see he made a lot of people rich. And right now, when he is invested uh, his money, uh, around $400 uh, billion dollars invested in seven companies. And now he is a symbol. If one company is not uh, creating a business, so he goes and invests, and that company really flourishes. So he is now the symbol of success. So I'm t- I was talking about the Warren Buffet. One Warren Buffet was sitting. Uh, in some matter ceremony along with the Gates family, you know, when the young uh, uh, journalist came up and said, Sir, are you all three top successful people are sitting up here, senior Bill Gates and the junior Billy? I'm talking about the Bill Gates, the, uh, the CEO, uh, the owner right, of the Microsoft company, and the one, but they were sitting in the marriage. And the guy came up and he said, hey, Sir, are you all top three successful people sitting up here? So please tell us what one secret is like to become the greatest success. And they all talk just in one way, focus. So you need a focus, uh, and if you can focus, focus means uh, once you take a picture, okay? So uh, the most important thing, like you, you look at the stars, you look at, at the circles. So in focus, you focus the most important thing. Other things, even they are blurred, you don't need the result in that picture. You don't want to see them in it. Focus means, and Persistence, like you gotta work hard, not just hard. I don't believe in hard working. I believe, even I don't believe in smart working. I don't believe in hard work. I don't believe in smart work. Even I don't believe in hard work. A lot of people they work from the heart. Even I don't believe. I'm so sorry. I believe in workaholic. I believe in work 24 hours. All right, this is, this is a one must uh, strategy. He says you gonna be working. All your waking hours, all right? You're going to be working waking hours. You're sleeping, and other time, you're working. You're sleeping, you're sleeping, around. you're sleeping for six hours, you're sleeping for five hours. But for other time, you're going to work, all right? You're going to work, and you're going to work work a holiday, okay? You're going to work all right? I can tell you that. Why, why do people are successful? Why? Because they work more harder, and they work more, all right? So let's talk about... Uh, how can you master your entrepreneurship business? All right, because this is today's quest, and everyone, everybody wants to know. So number one, we already have this quest. So this is kind of summary, all right, we did a discuss. So number one step is develop a winning mindset, all right? We recently have trained uh, one group like, we trained them with their mindset, because 
A lot of people, when they start their business, all right, uh, in the United States, a lot of people celebrate a day when we, we invite all uh, the failure stories. We invite all the unsuccessful people into the business. And uh, the last time, the all unsuccessful businessmen, they started off and they, uh, they invested money, uh, but they got failed. They put in the calendar project, and the project was finished. All right, they wrapped up their uh, that business or company line. All right, so what was the failure? What was the biggest failure in their mind? So once they were asked, so the one thing was totally common about all those businessmen. Then, because when they started up their business, before coming on to the starting line, they already had in their mind that in their heart, they had a fear, they had a doubt that maybe uh, they were 50-50, they had no conviction, they had no belief that they were going to be successful in this project. They already had doubt in their heart and mind. Before getting onto the boat, they already had to feel that, oh my God, we knew we are just investing this money, but we are not expecting that it's going to be successful. Here, I want to tell you, all the top successful entrepreneurs, when they start their business, they always idolize, they always think, they connect their business, they always imagine about they have a big jet, they always think about, they idolize their success. Once you get connected with, the, with your idolized success, then you see, the process even would be simple. Yes, we need to focus on on the process, I, I personally have been believing that we need to just think about what you will, you need to get connected and what you will get out of the business. No, even you need to focus on the process because in the process, you have to take some most important decisions because it's all about decision. What your life is today is because of your past decision. If, you, uh, if you've been taking life with this decision, you are enjoying your life at the top level, okay? So we need to develop a mindset, okay? We need to how people like to idolize and to imagine something bigger. They never need to be the fixed mindset. Remember, that's only nine mindset. So you need to do like what's your mindset. You need to first scale yourself. You need to see like what's your scalability, where you need to improve yourself. Because if you want to become billionaire, again, if you want to become billionaire, first you need to make 10 people billionaire. All right, you need to make a mindset. You know, it's a game plan. All right, so what you are doing for your business really is a part of game. Failure is a part of game. A lot of people, they fail the millions of times. All right, they fail thousands of times. But they stay. They never get out of the business. They never go out of the business. They, they have a very special kind of mindset. Okay, it's, it's a mindset that I'm not going to do a job. I will do my own business. Why? Because I want to become filter. If I want to, I want to work in a car. I want to work in a money. I would have my jet. I'm a capital. So you need to know what your mindset. So first, you need to develop a mindset. All right, what comes to your mindset? I even I, um, I interact with a lot of people. So with the more time, I can understand this this person. This person I have a business mindset. This is a winning mindset. A winning mindset is a person who already has who already has born. When they get into the business, they already have a moral victory work out. And this is like what the coach is also do with their clients and their players. What are they doing? They always tell them about their success. They always connect their feelings, emotions, and their activities. They always tell them, hey, you're going to be big and successful. No. So you need to believe in yourself. You need to develop a very special mindset for the entrepreneur. And number two is invest in yourself because you are the most important project in your life. You could be investing in yourself because uh, you are the most important person in the world. All right, a lot of people I ask, hey, who do you love most in your life? A lot of people tell me, hey, I love my mom, I love my brother, I love my sister, I love my girl, I love my folks. No, no, you better be the first one. If you better invest in yourself, if you gonna be successful, then you can make more people successful. All right. If you gonna invest in yourself, if you gonna invest in the case you gonna, you are taking exercise, okay, you are working out, you are reading uh, at least uh, like 30, 40 pages a day. All right, you are reading about.
secret. He quotes from the school, all right, and he started to read only one question. And I hear, I want to tell you, even in the United States, in the UK, in Canada, in India, or everywhere in the world, in all educational institutes of school, college, university, the one most important question is missing out there from the curriculum and from the syllabus. And the question is how to become rich, how to earn money, how can I get to be rich, what I need to do. People don't know how to become rich. This is the most significant question. All right, and how to earn money. Why? Because by the end of the day, I personally feel because school called university, they are depriving your kids, your children, you know, from the practical life. And I don't know what kind of content this university called school is teaching. Even I interviewed a lot of people that for the MBAs or like in the business education, they have no idea. They have, seriously, they have no idea what to do with this life. They have no idea how to earn money. Why? Because the education system is developing people to become and to find a free slot from any from the economic and from the economic, you know, that wheel. All right. So we are studying all the life what can help us to get a job. The education is not helping, it's not making us or children's mind like to go into the business. Well, so number three is define your why. The time is saying that. Good guy. So this is the leadership question. Define your why. What's the purpose of your life? What you're going to do? Why are you doing this? And how many people you can help with this? Always have the positive intention. The intention is the health. Whatever you're doing in your life, always. The health is a very powerful word. All right. Whoever you have. A lot of people, they, they want to become rich. All right. So I, I asked one person, hey, I, I want to become doctor. Hey, what do you want to become doctor? He said, I, I, become, I would become rich. If you want to become rich, okay, then you can do a lot of things. Okay, to become rich is a big vision. And you have a lot of domains. You have a lot of paths where you can go and you become rich. A lot more. One of my students told me, I want to help people. I want to become a doctor. All right, okay, well, you become a doctor because I want to help people. So help has a different way. Not just by becoming a doctor, okay? If you are a trainer of people and you are helping people to go to the next level, consciousness level, so it's also a degree in health, okay? To help those into the different ways. So, so then create a solid plan. Being an entrepreneur, you need to create a solid plan, right? You need to know how to execute, all right? You need to know uh, what I can access to, what would be my location, what would be my marketing style, how would I get information, how would I... Uh, go in research and development, all right? I will place myself in the market and how this idea will help people, all right? Because being an entrepreneur is not uh, to become great. It's all about helping people. Okay, so next is conversing networking. Uh, yeah, that's the point here. So the point is, you know, I'm pretty happy that like I'm working in IIU. So this is a great network. And I want to make sure that you're watching this podcast before this I. I knew before getting onto this board, I was a totally different person, but now I'm enjoying a lot. I'm getting a lot of great things, and they are really from my domain. All right. So, in today's world, the biggest challenge is to go and find your network. Okay. You need to find the like minded, the goal minded friends. Right. You need people who can think like you. You need people who are working absolutely like, like you are doing in your life. All right. You need people who are doing like you. All right, so you need to build a network for you, and you need to go into the right network where you can uh, talk. Even that, you know, a lot of people like they have a lot of friends. Even you have to cut down uh, that list, you have to make a list, and you only need to take people in your list who are thinking like you, who are dreaming like you, who are envisioning and visioning on the same mission. Because now, if you would have the same kind of talk, you would get a lot of ideas. Otherwise, you are just wasting your time, money. And most importantly, your energy, which is totally irreplaceable. All right, number seven, adapt and innovate. You need to have adaptability, all right? You need to be so flexible, and you need to know today's problem, and you need to know, like we train people for NLP, the Olympic program, so we help people, you need to think of three steps ahead. 
you need to know like what's coming after 500 years. And that's where your opportunity is. So, so today, you get it in a way. Innovation doesn't mean like to, to discover something. Innovate means to create, an, to create an idea, to create a platform, and to execute your idea and then see the results, especially in finance, because then you expand yourself more and more. So you need to become adaptable and you need to be innovative. And next is overcome fears and take action. It's the most important thing. All right, a lot of people will tell you, hey, you can't do it. All right, I knew few people that have been doing this and they will never get, they never got success in it. All right, people will share with you their fears. And the more people you listen, the more you get away from your goal, your vision, your dream and mission. So you need to, even you don't need to share your biggest dream with the ordinary people, all right? Because they're going to share their fears. And you, after listening, you start believing. So you need to install some entire software on your heart and mind and never get a, the negative impact from people, especially the people sharing fears. And the 99% of people, you are surrounded with the people they have fears in your life. Like, uh, um, and the beautiful code, I can, uh, I can tell you, like, uh, if you are moving with a nine loser, so you put it in a tenth one, because your life is average of the people you are surrounded with or you are spending your time with. All right? So if you have five people around you, so you, you are getting their energy because energy is contagious. All right? So you are average of the five people you are spending most of your time with. So you need to know where your time is going. All right. So always monitor yourself and monitor your time and see what's coming to me. All right. Because what's coming to you is the time that is going into you. All right. So the next what I can tell you is step number nine, develop emotional intelligence. In you know, in, when you want to develop emotionally, so you need to know first, you know, your self-awareness, okay, the self-regulation. And you need to stay motivated. You need to know when you are unmotivated or you are stuck somewhere. So how to get motivated? How can I get myself out of that situation? And most important, importantly, like you need to create an empathy. Empathy doesn't mean uh, it, it's, a, it's a very huge and a beautiful term. If you don't have an empathy, you already have discussed about it. You need to develop your attitude to help people. Empathy brings integrity. Empathy. Uh, means like you put yourself in someone else too and you you do like what's their problem and how can you fix them? You have a soft heart and core like in your heart and you need to be soft hardened and you need to develop an attitude helping other people. All right. So you need to develop yourself, uh you need to develop empathy and social skills like how to socialize with people, how to influence people because uh, communication um working for less uh this is my most favorite, and uh, this is where I have spent a lot of time helping people uh, like to learn languages. All right. So, uh, in, while you are socializing, while you're impacting people, your body matters a lot. If I'm not doing like this and this and that and that, so it it would have no impact. Otherwise, I would be just a robot. Okay. So. We as a human being, we are so amazing. Body is so amazing. You know, it has 36 billion neurons. It has 11,000 kilometers long veins in our body and 100 trillion cells. The body is very complicated. All right. So we we connect, we connect with the people. We are lying. We are embracing. You know, a lot of things. So uh, in in a mental social way, you need to move the body language. All right. This is most impactful. How to use your hands. And your eyes, all right, and your face, and your body, you know, it speaks. Body speaks more than 93%, and words are just 7%. Well, so step number 10 will celebrate your wins and learn from your loss. When you lose, you're going to learn from it because you can't learn from your success. You're going to learn from your failures. Failures are, are, are full of lessons and energy as well because it will help you like to go into the next level. All right, so the greatest thing for the greatest entrepreneurs, they always celebrate their wins. They always appreciate them, but no one will you know, help you like this. Or, or no, nobody will help you. No, no, nobody will appreciate you. You are enough for yourself. Whenever you get something good and done, great, so always take yourself to the restaurant, okay, and appreciate yourself and serve yourself with a pizza, serve yourself 
with some party, with some drink, and all of that is just your thoughts and say, wow, Michael, you've done a lot today. Today, you definitely you could inspire a lot of people to become an entrepreneur. All right, so after my 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 this uh, talk, I would definitely have a question in my head. And I would have, I appreciate myself, and I'm decided like that because I would take I want a cup of coffee, uh, having a long day today. Well, so you celebrate your win, okay? And you are enough for yourself, right? You, you're going to be helping yourself. You're going to be appreciating yourself. Because no one is coming to push you. No one is coming to appreciate you. Okay. So, oh, oh well. So, uh, next I just want to talk about uh, some great habits, successful habits for the entrepreneur women, okay? Or the men. I don't mind, okay? I don't discriminate for me like everyone is saying. So, number one is uh, you need to measure your program, okay? And you, uh, and this is the greatest habit of all top successful entrepreneurs, they always evaluate themselves. Like in the last point I told you, I always evaluate myself. I'm always getting better than before. I never. Um, look at the people like what they're doing. I always measure my progress. I always take the calculator risk. I already know like if this, my plan is not working, so then what will happen and what plan I will take. I will go for the plan B, C, D, and there is unlimited plan that you can have. It. So and number three is you will never stop learning. You are ready to learn every day because if you learn more, definitely you will earn more. And you know, the reading habits can help you a lot. The readers are the great readers, all right? So you see the all top tier people, you see the one Buffett can read 500 pages a day, like the alarm that like can read um, Google or uh, in two or three days, like Bill Gates, like he's still out of the more and more. This is a lot of courses is available, like how to read faster and to uh, understand it in a better way. So always delegate wisely. This is the fourth habit. If you are a great entrepreneur, you need to learn how can you delegate your work to the different people. You need to know the priority of the work and how can it be impactful on my whole day. You need to know uh, how to eat the life product. Well, so uh, I hear this is the most important thing everyone needs to know because an entrepreneur a lot of time has been worth it, all right? So here I want to tell you uh, the time management skills, all right? Because time management is a life management, all right? So you don't have to manage your time. You become better as compared to your time. Time and time is so much, all right? That's good. But uh, here you need to develop some habits, okay, uh, which can help you to save your time. So number one is, this is my most favorite chart. So don't skip this most important part. Number one is, Prepare it on that. So here there's a formula. Brian Tracy introduced the six amazing parts and he introduced the formula, the six P. Okay. Uh, prior proper planning to win poor performance. Six P. Prior proper planning to win poor performance. If you plan it, and because I feel preparation is more important than preparation, and you need a preparation before the preparation, you need to get focused first. Okay. Then you can get it in a better way. So always advance, uh, prepare in advance, whatever you're doing, all right? So number two is schedule your day. Schedule it. The most important thing you can do in a day, what I'm going to do tonight is, you know, I the most important thing I can do is, before going to my battle, I will plan my next day, all right? I don't take my calls in the morning. My first half is just I get focused on my work. All right, and in the meanwhile, I already knew like what the most impactful work at my office, what the most impactful report, what the most impactful client I need to invest more time. But I already knew like uh, I always keep an eye on my flaws because if my um, I, I always love to eat my life flaws. So, all right, means the most impactful task I get it done in my most important time. In, in uh, I would take it to my priority because if I have 400 tasks and I do 399 tasks and I do it pretty well, but if it has no impact on my work and I I'm doing this one thing which has most 
which, which is most impactful and can bring a more profound change or can be a more driven in my day. So what I do, I pick up my bad day, my bad path, which is most impactful. Even my, it's just, if I get to do 399 things and do it in a much further way, then, but still there's no result, so I, I, I won't be happy, all right? So I would, I would be always worried about, about that. A life for is always looking at me because this is the most important, important and most impactful task in the day what I do. So start your day early. I had a habit to wake up at three o'clock. I always had six extra hours in a day. It's for my childhood, right? Okay. So I, I always, you know, if I, I wake up six extra hours in a day so I can take more courses, all right? And if you could multiply these extra six hours in the morning, which I, uh, and most importantly, from two o'clock to two o'clock, I work in truck. I, I don't want uh, any kind of instruction, all right? I, so this is my working hours because this is most important time in my life. So I had a habit like to, in my whole life, okay, I had a habit like to wake up and to use six extra hours in a day. So if you could multiply with seven days, so it becomes almost, on uh, nine days a week. If you have uh, two extra days in a week, it means like you would have um, other people, they have 30 days a week, but I have 38 uh, days a month. In my month, there are 38 days because I utilize it pretty well. I wake up more and I have a habit like to work more and more and more and more because I work more than other people. That's why. I can impact more people. I can become more successful in my life. So this is what I do. And if you get a, if you have 38 days in one month, it means eight days extra in a month. So if you could multiply with a 12 months, 12 months by eight, so it's 84. 84 means it's almost three months extra. Other people they have 12 months a year, but I have 15 months a year. So I'm enjoying 15 months. So I've been waking up. And I've been burning the blue match oil, and I've been like working uh, really, you know, more than other people. That's why I became more successful. I could get more advantage of my life. All right. So, this is what I've been like doing. So, I always start my day early, all right, and I work more than other people. So, the next thing is you need to increase your productivity. All right. How can you increase your productivity? There are a couple of, there are two times in a day. One is internal science time, the next is external science time. In internal time, time, I want to tell you, like, if you get up, if you are a day person, which means like you work from nine to five, you work from three to whole day, you work in, uh, in a daytime, it means you sleep at night. If you sleep at night, it means you're a day person. If you're a day person, so your internal time time starts early in the morning, all right? Like from three to onward is my internal time time when I get up in the morning. And from three forward, as the time is moving on, as I'm going with the sun, as I'm gradually, you know, going to the set. So what happens? My external prime time is started. Like at night, when you're, uh, you you go into your subconscious and your even external time is over, you know, how? What, what happens? Like in the morning, it's my internal time time. And as the day is passing on, I'm getting closer to my subconscious. I'm getting more closer to my External time time. So I always take most important tasks and jobs in my internal time time and unimportant or unnecessary tasks I take in external time time. So I knew my prime time and I knew my external time time, internal time time and external time time. So you need to know what's your internal time time. And I would recommend you like you need to take the toughest and the most impactful task you need to take up in your internal time time. Because in internal time time, you are in your full element. You are in your full energy. Your blood up in is faster than other time, all right? You're much active. Your neurons are much open and awakened. Because when you wake up in the internal time time, your 20% physical mind is active, okay? You have more questions about the thing. You can do better. You can go into the details and you can learn more and you can fix the much complicated things in that internal time time. All right, and in external time time, you don't need to get worried. You just can take the easy stuff and things with it. You don't need to put more your critical mind. You don't need to be more critical about it. You, do, you don't need to ask more questions. If, if things are you put in some gun to stop in, then you can 
system, you can get it done. That's what we call your external plan. You first, you need to know your internal plan time and external plan time, and then bifurcate, and you need to give grace to your task, and then accordingly, you will do an internal and external plan time. Next is air travel time. I um, used to travel a lot, you know, so in traveling time, even you are traveling somewhere, so your travel time is the most uninterrupted time. In this time, you really need to read or you need to listen to some audio cassette or, or, or you play or you need to have some data that's going to help you like to go on to the next level. And in, in air travel time especially, you can increase your productivity, all right, because it's the most uninterrupted time. And the things you couldn't read, you couldn't understand, you know, that's the time like you can open this up and you can start working on your laptop or on your board. So the next is the last one is the organizational skill. It means you need to know how to manage your data because in 30 minutes time, it's in the, the, the recently reported, most of the time when you are searching or you, you are searching your data, so you spend most important 30 minutes while searching in the file. So people don't know how to manage your file. So there is a methodology A to Z. So you according to make folders and you put the data into whatever you need it, you just go into the folders and it will help you like how to get your data, even your personal state data. So here's the question why we need to become an entrepreneur. Because this is the most important quest for today. So why we want to become entrepreneur, so there are some reasons to become entrepreneur. Reason number one is age doesn't matter. All right, if you want to become entrepreneur, age doesn't matter. You are young. I knew I was searching, browsing like the top uh, 10 young entrepreneurs. They are still just teenagers. They are the youngest people who they are an entrepreneur. They are fixing a lot of issues. They are following, they're becoming solutions to the biggest problem. So age doesn't matter. You are even 75, you are 89, you are 60, you are 50. Doesn't matter. All right? So you qualify. Your age. Uh, doesn't matter. It's not a restriction. You can start your business anytime, any day. All right, when you're doing a job, if you're not too old to, to, to dream bigger in your life, you're not too old to start to execute your any dream. So the next reason is no degree needed for um, this uh, particular entrepreneurship venture. You don't need, you already highly qualified for it. All right, the qualification, it doesn't matter, right? I could See, I can tell you a lot of people, they they have no particular qualification you know, uh, for some business or for some problem that you are going to solve, but still you qualify for it, all right? You can start with a limited model, even if it's a black and limited model, because uh, it would help you really take risks and you really can put all your sins and all your devotion and dedication into it, all right? So no degree is needed for all this, all right? I personally know at least my 10 friends, they are not qualified from university, they're not qualified from school, all right? Even I see when I go to different schools, there's one young guy like he's selling something out of the school, another kid they are in the school. And I see one person like he was used to sell something like that in the school and now he's a great business, all right? So all top great entrepreneurs, they are the back ventures, all right? So don't worry about it. You can start anytime. All right, so to constantly uh, you you become better version of yourself, all right? And this is, as a human being, this is uh, instilled in our body because body is biologically a goal oriented. It always wanted something new. And the entrepreneurs, they are always becoming the better version of them, all right? They always, uh, they are never happy. They are never satisfied, whatever they're doing. They always do when they go into the next level. They always want to go to the next, 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 next level. Why? Because success is no ending. All right, success is a long journey. It means a patience that they always become innovative. They always uh, want to do something bigger. They always want to do something impactful. They're not happy. They always, you know, they have a curiosity like to, they're always asking for the new ideas. They always talk and discuss about the new ideas. So they become better version of themselves. All right. So next is a major source of contribution. Uh, one, one great philosopher and scholar, uh, harassment says, uh, you must feel ashamed to die before a major um, social contribution to your society. So you are born 
or right, you are unreasonable. If reasonable people are right, they are connected, they're happy, they're having fun, they are uh, they're enjoying their life. But the unreasonable people, they're always worried about people. They're always worried about something, all right? I know I'm talking to the unreasonable people right away. Why? Because you all want to bring some profound change. You always want to bring something new to this world. You want to bring out new ideas. You want to fix some problems for the people, all right? Like me, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, Elon Musk, okay, the Warren Buffet, and all top great tycoons. Even you see the top tycoon companies like they are socially, all right? They are responsible and they are contributing to this world. The next thing, the entrepreneurship would help you not to be controlled because you would have your own, you would have a control on your own life, on your relationship, and you would be influencing more and more people. You would be, you would be enjoying a leadership life, all right? Leadership means like you can influence people, you can impact people, you don't need to wait for your salary, you can work anytime, you can start your day anytime, all right? You can close your work anytime, you can meet anybody, you can attend marriage ceremony, you can go for the for for the trip, you can go for meetings, you can you can work anytime, all right? You would have control on your life. You don't need to ask someone, you don't need to put your application or you don't need to put in request for your vacation. No, you are free being an entrepreneur and it's still a great right? The next is get paid what you are worth. When you're an entrepreneur, you get according to your worth. I have seen a job I was getting, uh, for example, I was getting like one uh, one thousand US dollars, but with the help of my my good skill, I, I started entrepreneurship business. So I started to earn five thousand US dollars in one hour. All right, so you get paid accordingly. All right, people pay your money according to your value. All right, according to the worth that you are creating back into their life. All right, so you get paid. Make you know, the greatest board game you will ever play. So you get bored like some other game. But this is a game because as money you would get, you would have more accomplishment, you will grow more and more and more, and then you will love to earn more, more, and more. All right, this is an amazing game, both you will have. So change the world. Like the entrepreneurs, I told you, like the basic purpose is to help. And the, the change you see right now in the world is all because of the great top entrepreneurs in the world. Without entrepreneurs, this world would have been a totally different uh, globe. But today, you see, uh, the world is changed because of all the entrepreneurs. Because the entrepreneurs, they're the change makers, they're the influencers, all right, they make impact, and they have their own vision and their mission. And there would be no politics uh, in any kind of, uh, you know, uh, in your entrepreneurship business. Um, it's always, you know, you build up the new team, all right, and uh, if you have a dream goal, then you definitely you would have a dream team. I mostly, but if you don't have a dream vision, you don't have a dream team, all right? It, it means, it also means that if, if you visit some building you see there's no dream team, it means they don't have a vision. They don't have a dream building uh, for their company, all right? There will be no politics, all right? And there will be no uh, relations blood suckers in your business. So uh, you will grow through, and you will grow more and more. You will expand, you will extend, all right. You will, your mission will be, and your vision will be more and larger. All right. So the next is the creativity, right? So all the creativity you see in the world right now is all because of the entrepreneur. So the creativity is quite possible because of the entrepreneurship. All right, the happiness, the ultimate goal. But remember, happiness is not the ultimate goal. Uh, recently, I trained one company and they were invested a lot of money on the happiness. And I think this was the wrong thing. Uh, the oil money, you know, it couldn't something, they couldn't bring out something like that. Yeah, why? Because still, like the internal client was not happy. So the reason why you have to make people productive and entrepreneurship is all about productivity, all right? You, you become productive and you feel more productive people and teams and uh, you share your vision with the people and you bring uh, a profound change, you bring a lasting change and you help people to go to the next level and the people become happy, okay? So happiness is not bringing productivity. A lot of people, they are confused like they see and, and I've been talking to a lot of uh, my, my domestic
make my gold miner friends may feel like they're nothing more like to become a because being happy is it would last just after 12 hours, all right? After 12 minutes, it's just a feeling emotion, and this charisma would be last if you're happy, all right? But if you're productive, you're going to be happy again and again, and again and again, and over and over and over and over and over and over. All right, so it's okay to be a little weird. Why? Because uh, in the business, when you become entrepreneurial, you need to keep patience. It's okay to be a little weird. What is hard? It's not a big deal. Why? Because there are always big challenges, all right? So the more the few challenges you face, so the more opportunity situations you take up and you work on that, you get more positive work on that. So you can put on any kind of process. And you're going to be high on life. You're going to be uh, more productive after becoming an entrepreneur. You will definitely, uh, you will have your own lifestyle. And uh, you're going to be high. You're going to have more time. You're going to have more time for your life. You're going to have much better relationships. You're going to have relationships that demand your time, your attention, and your love and your kindness in your life. So uh, that's what. And one, one more thing I uh, I want to tell you, like, if you're an entrepreneur, you will never get bored, all right? Because it's always an interesting thing, an interesting game, and every day, every day you would have a new challenge, and you will become the version of yourself, and you will, learn, you will be learning something new. And the entrepreneurship, once you create some business, it's create a legacy, okay? So you are creating an empire for more and more people, all right? You will die. You will die somewhere, but you will leave a legacy to your to your next generation. Because the real purpose of, of our life is to make this world a conducive place for your next generation. All right, the energy is contagious. So, and your passions are contagious. All right, so whatever you do, like it will create more energy. Okay, and you will reflect into your next generation. This is what you can do. This is what the real purpose of your life. And you are born for it to do it. All right. So I will just sum up uh, my talk, okay, on uh, something on laws. And this is my most favorite law. And this is the law of expectation. All right. So there are three types of expectations we have in our life. Number one, expectation is worth. I want to teach this to my students. Number one expectation is the expectation of what your parents have from you. All right? Because they are investing each and every thing in you. All right? And they're always expecting uh, great for you. So 1,000 great parents, they were invited into one conference and they were asked, like, what is your biggest dream in your life? So they all wanted to see their kids, their children happy, their next generation very much happy and successful. So your parents will really love to see you happy and successful. And expectation number two is what your teachers have from you. They always expect very hard. Like Jeff must say, if, if you are a teacher and if your student is not replacing you after two years, it means you were not a great teacher. So being a great teacher, you create more people much better than you. All right? So Teachers always expect it very hard from their students, from their learners, from their learning officials. All right. And the expectation number three is the expectation that you have from yourself. And this is the most important one. It matters a lot. And you're going to be expecting a lot from yourself. So, because, and always raise and keep up your standards and then raise your standards and then try to. Meet up, and once you meet your resources, you meet your standards, then get it more higher. All right, so all the big is very hard from yourself. And this is today's message. All right, if you're going to expect very hard from yourself, you're going to be the most successful person, your entrepreneur, your teacher, whoever you are, because you are born to bring something great out of your life. All right, you are born to bring a massive change. You are born to make this world a conducive place for your next generation. I want to make you sure like you would expect from yourself that you see, 
one must Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett. Okay, and I think a long list of such great people. They expect to be a lot from themselves. All right? So I'm giving you a master of being an entrepreneur. All right, and you better be mastering yourself. You better be mastering your business. If you're expecting a lot from yourself, and the lesson number two is, whatever you're doing in your life, do it with intention to help someone. Your help will come to the back. All right, I think uh, it's enough built for today. And uh, thank you very much, Tiyush uh, Pandit and uh, Maha Shaheed. Uh, you guys seriously uh, helped me out with this response uh, to your clients here and to the humanity on uh, this part of growth. I'm feeling pretty honest, too. And again, I just want to say you thank you very much and stay blessed. It was chapter number one. All right, so in entrepreneurship, you need to cover, it's a big course, all right? It's maybe the AD level course, all right? Uh, well, so it was at the beginning, and hopefully, like, we are going to design more and more for you people. So always stay tuned on this channel, IIU. And again, congratulations to Maha for giving this attention and the English candidates and more of the people like I don't know their names. Oh, but it's a blessing for me as well, like, that I could share and also bring some energy. It's contagious. So thank you very much, Maha, uh, for helping me out. And I could talk to you. So thanks a lot. Appreciate thank it. Thank you very much, Maha. Thank you. I would like to thank you okay. for this uh, wonderful and inspiring thank session, you. actually. Thank you. I would like to thank you okay. for this uh, wonderful and inspiring thank session, actually. It was really great to hear thank from you, you today. I would like to thank you for this uh, wonderful and It was really great to hear from you today. Thank you for this. Uh... I appreciate it.